And we're back. <laughs> Ready to roll. You can find us on the Twitter at the FF Dynasty. We have a website. It's called the FF You can find us there. Anything else to add? Let's climb this Justice Hill. <laughs> All right. <laughs> 510, a buck 90, maybe. Leaking, soaking wet. Leaking, soaking wet. He's 21. Um, my couple of biggest things is explosive, twitchy, slippery. Uh, his two big moves are a jump cut and a spin. Mostly the jump cut. A lot of jump cutting. A lot of cutting around. He'll throw a little spin in there every once in a while. I just want to dance. Yeah. <laughs> he does He does dance sometimes. Sometimes I'm not sure whether or not he's he's working hard to gain three yards or if he's just dancing a little bit too much against inferior defenses. Uh, you, he's definitely twitchy. You yeah, see, You see for the sure. ability twitchy to is... stop and start really well. He's probably going to perform decently at the combine, which is probably going to elevate his stock a little bit. I'm not, I, don't, I haven't been listening to anybody else's stuff or reading any other rankings or anything like that. I've just been straight watching tape, so I, I don't know where Justice Hill falls on the consensus meter of, oh, I love Justice Hill, or yeah, you know. Oh, I, I think Justice it's a mixed Hill. bag. I've seen him kind of all over the place. Um, I do. He's he's added weight every year, which is nice. Really like seeing um, that. And even I've, at 185 pounds, I think he was squatting. Like 565 five, pounds 60 or something, something like that. Yeah, he was squatting a lot. So yep. uh, you can see that in the cuts. And watching, you're right. And watching what he does, I would say, although the power game is not his calling card, um, I do think that he has a little bit more power than the frame suggests. He's got a strong lower half, um, good leg drive, and contact balance, as they like to call it. Right. Um, but is not necessarily over there just breaking tackles and doing Snell and Montgomery kind of things. No. But, you know, I think he does should get a little bit of credit for breaking some tackles with with solid leg drive. There's plenty of broken tackles out there, but, I mean, it's, again, he's playing in the Big 12, so sometimes defense is optional in that in that conference. But, I mean, you see him converting, converting multiple fourth downs. Doesn't seem to be bothered by contact, as you mentioned. There's plenty of yards gained after contact. Seems pretty. I don't tough. want him to be my between the tackle grinder. I don't but. necessarily want him to either, but I like like Henderson. I don't think he has to be. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you throw in the receiving ability, it, it's I think it's there. I don't know that he's getting it was a ton weird of credit usage for it. So in he, that facet, he had 31 receptions in 2017. All of his numbers went down across the board in 2018. Um, I, I could try to make an argument or an excuse for why some of those why he had some down games a couple of them the team got down big in and they were they they couldn't a rib injury run the ball he he finished the year with a rib injury and missed the final i think three games old chubba hubbard came in there and played well my man taylor cornelius the quarterback was vulturing a ton of i like <laughs> taylor cornelius that's his name great that's great name. right great cornelius. name he's waiting in the wings for four <laughs> years behind mason yep. and uh i like to say that this i mean they they lost mason rudolph and james washington so you don't lose two NFL guys, you know, right. and, and get better as a team. And Aitman. So they Mr. Alabama. And Aitman. Um so yeah, a lot of still talent dropped Stoner off. over there. Stoner still still Stoner making his name in the in the highlights for sure. Um but I mean so, so Cornelius had freaking 122 attempts for 408 yards rushing and 10 touchdowns in 2018. So there's ah. a there's a ton of a vulturing done there. So I'm just trying to make some some arguments for why my man had it down. I think that's down. the noise that the vulture the, the, makes. Vulture, vulture, vulture. <laughs> I had nothing else. I didn't know what what it, what sound do they make? <laughs> I think you just mixed. Do they do they? Do vultures make a sound? I don't think that was a vulture sound. I don't know Your what you want to do. Was probably closer to vulture. I don't know what you want to do. Now don't start that again. What was that? A little Jungle Book. Aren't those vultures that? Uh, are they British vultures in John John? Oh, yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Well, I, I think the your, guy, your I, ability to go into a movie is uncanny. <laughs> on a drop of a hat to I go pull movies. something out of a movie. That's, that's I love movies. That's ridiculous. <laughs> I uh I, I learn a lot from movies, you know. I, like a how to talk like a British vulture. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, <laughs> it's crucial things in life here. Right. Um he shows some hesitation out there. Sometimes it looks indecisive, but other times it looks like he's letting blocks develop. He's good in the open field at letting 
blocks develop. Um, let's see. Yeah, I don't. The vision's not necessarily my favorite attribute. The vision could be questioned. Like I was mentioning earlier, it's it's. I, I struggle with is he dancing here or is he missing a hole, or is he just working hard? You know, I don't know which one is which. It resulted in usually three plus yards, so. It's hard to knock him, but I, I'm not sure how I feel about the vision just yet. Um, I do think the patience got better as you. I think when you watch from 16 to 18, you can see him getting a little more patient behind the line and decisive. So the vision may be increasing just a little bit, and uh, to go along with the patience of kind of waiting behind the line and making a decisive move there. So you know, on the up, growing on the up, ups, game could be slowing down to him a little bit as he gets better. I think some of that, uh, some of that, just patience can be or, or the working hard jay wayne mentions like he's obviously when he's making some of those cuts in the hole like it may he may not be cutting the right direction every time but the efforts i mean that the squats coming through the legs for sure sure, sure. and I, I touched on the receiving ability a little bit coach's uh, son high motor i was decently <laughs> impressed with it you see him lining up in the slot and out wide um didn't see too many targets but you see him going out there that's that's intriguing and uh, would have liked to see more targets in total because I think there is a good piece to his game there. He spent time in the in the receivers room in camp uh, before the 2018 season to get more comfortable in that aspect. So you like reading that. Uh, the pass protection, I'm not sure it's the best. I, I don't feel great about I it. I don't love it. You, may, you see him making some decent chip blocks, but then you look at the Boise State game and he was just olaying all over the place. Yeah. Just drive killing missed assignments and whiffing multiple times, and I was just sitting there like, "Dang it!" Put my head down. Like, what are you doing, man? You gotta, yeah, I you gotta do better. I definitely don't love the pass pro. And then I also, when it is his, when the play call is for him to block, he blocks, and that's it. You never see him break away Move to help. Right. So when you don't have anyone to block, the good, the good pass catchers out of the backfield will turn around and become an outlet for their for their quarterback, which I love to see, and I didn't see that from him. It was Not a little a disappointing. Um, but I do think, other than that, he has pretty good awareness on the field. You see him in at the end of game situations and when the clock's running down at the end of a quarter or a half, he, he's not wasting time after a good run with celebrating or whatever. He's getting the ball to ref. He's running back in line of scrimmage. His head's in the game. Um, I think the off-the-field stuff is pretty is a positive for him. Um, as you mentioned, he added weight every year. He was initially listed at 171 pounds as a freshman, up that to 185 as a sophomore, and then listed at 190 last year. Um, the, sco- the coach speaks very highly of his character, his work ethic. His, he says he's highly intelligent. He has love for his teammates. Um, and then I'll quote him here. He says, he's what you want your son to be when he grows up. So he's, he's got that. He, and he'll talk about it himself. He's not a vocal leader. He would rather lead by example. He's not the, the most yeah. outspoken guy, but he's in there putting in work and getting better every year and improving himself. So I like I, I like where his head's at, and I don't have any concerns about him off the field, mm-hmm. so that's good. So the coach, the quote about what your son should be when he grows up, that's what the coach said about him? Yep. That's cool. Yeah, because it – was it uh, – he was – the coach, right, was recruiting him to come to – was it Tulsa? That was that's David Montgomery. Oh, right. This is Justice. Coach. We're on Justice. Well, that coach was speaking very highly of David Montgomery too. Right? <laughs> Getting my uh, coach speak there mixed up. Um, it's easy to do. Coaches do a lot of speaking. Coach coach speak is real. So I'm I'm intrigued by this guy. The twitchiness and the receiving yeah. ish ability. Yeah. I think. So, th- so those things make him exciting. He is a little bit of a cutter. He's not a fan of getting tackled. So if he can try to cut around a good tackle, he'll do it. Does 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 too much cutting for me. Uh, I don't believe he's a workhorse at the next level. Even though there are, he did have some workhorse uh, like numbers, like numbers in seventeen it, particular carry wise. Um, I think when you put the growing patience and the explosiveness that he has. And a little bit of that power, uh, like low end power, and the contact balance uh, that he has, and you put that together, I think that's what makes him an interesting back. Um, I don't see him as someone being a featured back in the NFL. Granted, not many featured backs in the NFL at this point, so it doesn't certainly doesn't mean that he can't be very effective at the next level. 
He's a good runner, should get an opportunity at the next level. Just don't see, you know, 20 game futures in his future, 20 game carries in his future. I read somewhere about, well, in three years, he'll be a featured back. Like, what, what the hell does that mean? Right. Not too <laughs> like many backs are getting three years to become good he's, in the NFL. No, I don't think he's even 190 pounds. That would be generous. He um, looks a little small. To, but to maybe, shit, maybe he'll weigh in at 198. I don't know. Um, but he has plenty of tools that make him very intriguing to me. Uh, the hands are one of those things. Um, it makes him got to make him attractive to a lot of teams. And then I think when you put this guy in space and let him do his thing, he's electric. He's electric. I think both him and Henderson that we just talked about are space type players. Mm -hmm. Like you don't want either one of these guys grinding it out for you, but they both have upsides in the way the NFL is going right now. Like they're both could be really, uh, good players in, in, in how this pass happy league is kind of moving towards and and they're good players in space exactly. and they're fast and electric and there's nothing wrong with these guys i just don't think that they're this is i think part of the reason why this class is probably being downplayed a little bit because there's a lot of backs that are going to be a little bit more role players than the big time guys and you know there's only so many roles to be played right well as the offenses continue to evolve and the copycats come around like the you know is and I'm not saying it's a copycat in Chicago because Nagy came from Kansas City, but the, you got the Tariq Cohen role. This is semi hybrid of what Tyreek Hill was doing, and then you'll look at other teams that are just trying to say, all right, well, how can we do that? How can we get? How can we copy it? Can can we find can somebody we be James like, White? Can we find? Can, a, we, be, can we find yeah. a Alvin Kamara? Can we find a way well, to, to to use running backs in a different way? Than just nightmares than just between the tackles. And, you know, so it's because not every team has a Zeke or a Gurley. And, uh, and and there is a spot. The funny thing is, is the way this works is, it, Casey's really big on this with wide receivers, but both of these cats could go to, like, it's, it's the, the, the position's filled on the Saints, but that's the perfect spot for one of these guys uh -huh. that you're just not sure. You don't, you don't want them to be the grinder, but if they were in the right spot, Kamara's there. Mm -hmm. But... That's and it, that that marriage was absolutely perfect for the Saints and Kamara in that system. That's why they traded up to get him, and you know so or like a Sproles and the Eagles, or something like that. If there's if if there's if the right place and the right person goes to you know if the if the, yeah, if the puzzle pieces fit, meet, it's player fit, it's, if the puzzle pieces go together and it's a perfect tight fit, both of, like there's nothing that says Justin Hill Justice Hill couldn't be a great fantasy player for you, but if well, he yeah. gets in, but if it's in the wrong spot or the, or the GM drafts him and the coaching system is like, that's not what, what do you do? I, I can't use this guy. Right. And he could be in a, he could just be locked up right. for two or three years and it just yeah. won't, and, and he'll be on your bench or on your taxi squad. So I think the good news is with both of these players is that they don't need a ton of volume to be fantasy relevant because explosiveness, twitchiness, slipperiness are, are justice Hill's calling card and Henderson's got, some different attributes that make him kind of explosive in his own way. Um, and both can get you chunk yardages and have a nice, P should have a nice PPR floor built into them. So they're more hybrid -y players to me. And obviously if, if either one of these guys goes into the right system, they could be awesome week in week out. I mean, Naheen Hines was awesome for a stretch there. Yeah, and now good it's point. just good you know, point. If, now it's, if, what are you doing with that guy? If they, if, if, from week to week, if they were like, all right, Naheem Hines, if he's our guy, we're going to throw him the ball 10, 12 catches a game. Uh, you know, Marlon Mack's healthy. Naheem Hines is forgotten about. I think both of these guys are better running backs than Naheem Hines, Agreed. so they, they should be able to get. So they should be able to see the field and get some more carries. I don't think either one of these guys should just be like a passing game specialist. They're they're capable of running the ball some, and I think I like Henderson more. So I'm having oh, a hard yeah. time with Justice Hill. Yeah, and and there's no I, doubt I don't really it. know where to put him. I need to see more players Henderson. in this draft to to kind of see how I really feel about him. I like Henderson way more than Hill currently. Henderson should get some carries for sure. Um, but Hill Hill's definitely interesting, um, but not high on my radar currently yeah it's tough to see where to place them there's there are a bunch of more backs that we're going to get to and as, as as not deep as this class is there still are a lot of players to go through and see yeah i uh, think we talked about it when we were talking about maybe snell or montgomery like there's it seems to be a lot of small or on the smaller side kind of players who are maybe a little bit more role player kind of guys and uh 
So it should be fun through the rest of this evaluation process. I mean, guys that you might get a little excited about early on might tail off and they might stay at the top of your your board here. I mean, there's a lot of guys that go through. This is the most players that have ever declared for the NFL draft this year. It's a good stat. It's a good stat. Yeah, we'll keep digging into them. And then when the uh, NFL draft gets here, it'll bring the, the clarity that it brings every year and then bring the questions and confusion that it brings every year. Yeah, well... Wrap it up. Yeah, let's uh, let's get out of here. Thanks for listening, everyone. Yeah, we appreciate you. If you're listening on iTunes, on iTunes, Google Play, whatever you listen to, hit us up with a, a nice five star review. That would be greatly appreciated. Um, if you're listening on YouTube, a good old thumbs up would uh, would be great. A subscribe would be awesome, and we really appreciate you guys. Yeah. Until next week, this has been Married to the Game.